Hi, this is Dr. Gregory Sadler. I'm a professor of philosophy and the president and founder of an educational consulting company called Reason.io, where we put philosophy into practice. I've studied and taught philosophy for over 20 years, and I find that many people run into difficulties reading classic philosophical texts. Sometimes it's the way things are said or how the text is structured, but the concepts themselves are not always that complicated, and that's where I come in. To help students and lifelong learners, I've been producing longer lecture videos and posting them to YouTube. Many viewers say they find them useful. What you're currently watching is part of a new series of shorter videos, each of them focused on one core concept from an important philosophical text. I hope you find it useful as well. In his famous discussion of the three types, the three main sorts of friendships in Nick and McCain Ethics Book 8, one of the, okay, try that one more time. In the course of his famous discussion of the three main types of friendships, where there's some sort of reciprocity of affection between the people on some sort of basis, Aristotle talks about friendship in terms of virtue, or in other places also in terms of the good. And he takes this as being really the primary type of friendship, but it's in a certain way, although it provides us a model for what friendship ought to look like, and we, we see it represented quite a lot in um, imaginative literature, um, at the same time, uh, it's, it's not very common, as we're going to talk about, and we'll talk about the reasons for that. So it, it's an interesting point here that the, the most expansive, the, the friendship that actually fits the name friendship the best, is in many respects the least often found. So he tells us a lot of things about it. I, I did a video comparing the three types of friendship. Here I want to concentrate specifically on the friendships in terms of virtue because Aristotle considers them uh, to be so important both for the virtuous person and also in providing us with a paradigm for understanding what friendship really is at its core. So like I said, it is the, the fullest or the most complete type of friendship. Uh, Aristotle sets out a, a number of criteria for what friendship ought to encompass, and it's not the case for friendships of pleasure or friendships of utility that all of those components of friendship will necessarily be there or be developed to the same extent. In a friendship that is based on, on virtue, on moral excellence, um, there is a greater possibility for enjoying the full scope of, of friendship. Um, this is part of what makes it the least common. It's, it's not something that by its, its very nature you could have with just about anyone. And as a matter of fact, from an Aristotelian perspective, it's a fundamental mistake to think that you're going to have the capacity to have a friendship like this with anybody that you encounter. They have to have uh, engaged in quite a bit of moral development on their own part. So what is characteristic of this? Um, it, is, it is a reciprocal friendship it, where, where there, there's involved what Aristotle calls anti philesthai that means loving in return, anti meaning in return, and then philesthai is the verb that corresponds to philia, the, the word for friendship or relationship. So both partners feel a sense of affection, a sense of friendship, a sense of even we could say love towards the other. <clears throat> and what is it based upon? It's not based just upon the fact that they are useful to each other, although good people are indeed useful to each other, as we will see. It's not just based on the fact that they enjoy each other's company or the pleasure that they can give to each other, although, again, as we'll see, a friendship of virtue also encompasses that dimension. This is really a friendship in, in the fullest extent because it's based on the character, on the who that person is at their core, 
of the other person, and both of them are, are doing this. That's why sometimes we can have uh, experiences where we, we thought we were experiencing this sort of uh, fundamental intimacy, getting to know somebody uh, in, in their core, being attracted to that, uh, delighting in it, them also doing the same with us, and then you know the bottom drops out and we find out that that's not the case, and that's part of why, although Aristotle doesn't discuss this as such, that's part of why we feel that you know gut-wrenching betrayal in, in those sorts of cases, whereas a business relationship breaking up should not bother us to, to that extent. So the character of the other, and what is found in the character of the other in order to have this kind of friendship? It's not badness, it's instead moral virtue. So, you know, you can really only have this kind of friendship in any sort of reliable, lasting way if the other person actually has some degree of virtue. Um, and we'll talk in a minute about why perhaps this, this, this is not entirely possible for people who are self-controlled. Uh, another thing is that person is concerned with the noble, and insofar as they are rightly oriented, uh, insofar as they are virtuous, they are indeed one example of the noble. So one way to, to love the, the noble, the beautiful, the fine, is to love it in another person. And that's part of what makes this kind of friendship so wonderful. You have that, that reciprocal loving in return. Not only do you love the beautiful, but the beautiful or the fine or the noble loves you back if indeed you are worthy of that sort of love in this, this case. Um, there are, of course, uh, you know, what Aristotle calls unequal friendships in which perhaps we, we are friends with somebody who is who's clearly virtuous, but we are not virtuous. And they love us back, but they don't love us back for our virtue because we don't have it. So these people are, like he says, they resemble each other. There's a homilia, a resemblance, a similarity in virtue. Um, they, they see things the same way. Their moral compasses are, we could, so, we could say, so to speak, aligned in the same directions. Um, oftentimes these people will see each other doing the right thing and will congratulate each other on it but won't need to go into a lot of explanation about it because both of them already understand why doing X instead of doing Y is in fact the right thing and, and they, they delight in each other's company for that, that reason. Um, there's an intimacy that, that's possible there. They both, as Aristotle says, wish the other person good, which is a component of friendship. But why do they wish the other person good? For the sake of that person, because they actually know who that person is, and they wish them good, uh, other types of goods, on account of their goodness. So two kinds of good here, perhaps, right? Uh, but you could also wish that the person continues in their goodness because that also is a good thing. To be virtuous is not merely to be good for other people. It's to be good for oneself. It's to be in a good uh, state of, of personality or character. So um, Aristotle says several other things about this, this type of friendship that are very important as well. He says that it requires both time, which chronos, right, and familiarity. Soon atheia, um, literally, uh, you know, being together with each other. We, sometimes this is translated as intimacy. Um, unless you spend adequate time with the other person and you are actually observing what is going on with them, you cannot determine whether they are just merely acting virtuously, that is, acting in accordance with virtue or whether that's really part of who they are. So, you know, if we think about uh, important virtues, somebody may be acting courageous, not because he really is courageous, but because he needs to appear so in order to impress somebody, right? Somebody may be just, but they're only just because they like to avoid punishment. And, you know, over time, people will, will quite often reveal uh, their motivations for why it is that they're doing things, for the priorities that they, they set, for the choices that they make, for the commitments that they follow through on or fail to follow through on. They will let you know what that is, not only by the structure of their actions and the patterns of them, 
but by what they say over time. The virtuous person is going to, over time, talk in a different way than the merely self-controlled person, let alone the person who is, you know, motivated by, say, just extrinsic, you know, reward and punishment, uh, who's only good because, you know, somebody might be watching or something like that. So uh, friendship of that sort requires uh, quite a bit of time and uh, quite a bit of paying attention. This is part of why um, it is not possible to have a lot of friends like this, Aristotle says. You know, if you think about the demands of the amount of time that's required, if you're spending it with this person, you can't be spending it with that person over there. And you could not possibly have a hundred people that you would devote this sort of attention to. You would have to end up distributing it in some way. Now, of course, we might be able to come up with some computer-aided algorithm for doing that sort of thing. But uh, insofar as it loses the personal touch, it really wouldn't be that kind of friendship. You know, getting a lot of badges that tell you that you're virtuous <laughs> isn't the same thing as being virtuous. Um, this kind of friendship, uh, it, you know, corresponding to the fact that it requires some time, it also stands the test of time better than any of the other kinds of friendship. It is the most lasting one. And why is that? It's not liable to break to, to breakups. And why is it not liable to breakups? Well, because the virtuous person is not going to be oriented in the same way towards the typical causes of breakups of friendship, the way that other people having other kinds of friendship will. So the virtuous person, once they're actually friends with a person who is also virtuous, they're going to want to hold on to them. As a matter of fact, Aristotle even says, friends of this sort attempt to rival each other. They, they try to do each other more good than the other person does. So, you know, what would be examples of this in terms of virtue? Justice, you know, you can reach a certain sort of limit point with that. But what about generosity? Um, the, the, the really virtuous friend is going to be very generous with their other friend, not just because the other friend is going to be generous with them in return, but because they want to outdo their friend in the possession and exercise of the good. Not, not to deprive their friend of the good, but to actually increase what's going on within the relationship. Um, and we could say the same for all sorts of other virtues as well. Good humor is probably very important in there. Uh, honesty about oneself, right? Um, you know, uh, what else? The, the other social virtue. Uh, you know, if these people really are virtuous, they're probably not going to have to exercise the virtue associated with saying, no, 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 let's not do that. But, but if we imagine people who are not entirely virtuous, but on the way there, perhaps that will be important. One thing that I also do need to say is um, people who are self-controlled, the encratic, can have something like this with each other, but not fully have it because what's being admired in the other person is not the possession of virtue, but we might say being on the way to virtue, being rightly oriented, recognizing that one wants to be virtuous but is not yet. And there are many uh, people who I think are friends of that sort uh, and that goes along just fine so long as they stay on top of that inner conflict between right principle, uh, the virtue that they're aiming after, and their desires which are not yet brought into line with, with right reason. So um, they're not entirely in possession of this kind of friendship, but they're on their way towards that. Having a virtuous friend can often be a very great help in that. So this is the, the friendship par excellence for Aristotle. Like I said, it doesn't happen very often. And when it does happen, though, the, the, the uh, compensation for that is that it, it sticks around, perhaps for the entire lifetime of the friends.